Hi, I'm Mitch, and this video covers ray diagrams, nomenclature, and formulas for magnification with a simple lens. And I've already drawn a simple lens here centered upon a principal axis with my focal points labeled. And I actually drew this using the method from another YouTube video. This is the link, and I'll put it in my comments. And what I liked about that is that she drew her lens proportionally so that if you drew the ray diagram and then applied your measurements from your ray diagram to the formulas, the formulas in the ray diagram agreed. And so then we're gonna show, prove that here. So her le focal length for her lens was 10 millimeters and it was symmetric. So that means that F1 on the front side is equal to F2 on the back side of the lens. So both focal lengths are the same. So moving through the nomenclature, because this is bowed outwards, this lens is bowed outwards, we call that a convex lens. Since it's bowed outwards on both the front and the back, we call that biconvex. A lot of people would call this a converging lens. The optical center of this lens, where it uh, crosses the principal axis, is where we're gonna draw a lot of our lines through. And we're going to assume that light is passing from left to right through an object and then creating an image on the back side of the lens. So the object has a height h and it is a distance o from the optical center of our lens. We know that this is going to create a real magnified and inverted image somewhere over here on the back side. I don't actually know uh, how big that image will be yet, but I've drawn it here to help you understand the nomenclature. So I know that the image is going to have some height h prime and some dist it's going to be some distance i from the optical center. And I have to either calculate those from what I know or draw the ray diagram. Both of those should give us more or less the same answers. All I mean by real is that if we assume that rays of light originate from my object, we can follow those rays of light, uh, diverge, and then converge again on the image plane to create the image. So they're real rays of light that go from the object to the image plane. That is in contradiction to what we would call a virtual image, and I won't cover virtual images in this video, but this will be a real image. So let's uh, draw the ray diagram and do the calculations and see that they agree with each other. So here's our ray diagram. I'm going to draw two rays from the top of my object. The first is going to be parallel to the principal axis and it's going to pass through the center of the lens and then from the center of the lens, it's going to go down through the backside focal point and then I'm just gonna keep on going. And I draw arrows to show that the um, rays of light are passing in this direction. And then my second ray is going to go from the top, from the same point again, and come through down through the optical center and then just keep on coming until it intersects with my first ray. And so you can see I've stopped drawing those rays here, but essentially you can just keep going. And then the image is recreated where those two rays of light converge again. And so now um, I can determine magnification from this image. So this is this H prime is the height of my image. And then the distance to the optical center is I. And so my first simple lens formula is just M is equal to the image dis magnification is equal to the image distance divided by the object distance. And I've already measured my image distance to be 28 millimeters. So that means that magnification is just 28 millimeters divided by the 15 millimeter object distance. And that means that this height is about 1.87 times uh, the object height. And we can check that by just uh, measuring, again, the object height we knew to be 13 millimeters, and now this new image height I have measured to be 24 millimeters. And when we do that, 24 divided by 13, I get 1.85, which is about 1.87. The difference between these two is just round off error because I'm using whole millimeters. If I could count, uh, measure down to tenths of a millimeter, these would uh, agree exactly. And so whether you use I over O or H prime over H, you get the same answer. And now the second lens formula is used to determine focal length. So this is that it 
the standard form is 1 over the focal length is equal to 1 over the object distance plus 1 over the image distance. And I already know that my focal length is 10 millimeters, so let's just uh, check this formula. 1 over the 15 millimeter uh, object distance plus 1 over the 28 millimeter image distance does equal about 1 over 10. You'll have to use your own calculators to uh, prove that. So that confirms that F1 is equal to 10 millimeters. And I could have just rearranged this formula to solve for I without having to do this ray diagram because I knew this was 1 over 10 and I knew this was 1 over 15 and I could have solved this for I and it would have given me the same answer. So I didn't need to draw the ray diagram but now we see that the formulas agree with the ray diagram. And these two formulas have practical implications. You can see that if I want a high magnification the farther my object is away from my lens, the farther my image has to get away from my lens. And so if I have an object far away and I want large magnification, now my whole setup is getting bigger and bigger based on the amount of magnification I need or the distance that my object is away from the lens. This also has a practical implication. You can see that in order for this to work out, the object distance and the image distance must both be smaller than the focal length. And so that has uh, implications in terms of which lens you choose. And I'll go into both of those practical implications in a later video.